What's up guys? So I wanted to show you something that I've been looking at for a very long time and that is an Android head unit for my truck. Uh, right now I've got a Pioneer AVH uh, head unit in there. It doesn't do GPS. Um, it doesn't do a whole lot. You can It connects to your phone and you can do a uh, transfer your Pandora to it and your Bluetooth music to uh, listen to and it'll play off the phone. It doesn't really have anything beyond that. You know, it's got your normal radio. I can hook up my backup camera to it. And that's basically it. So I've been looking for probably a year or two um, at Android head units. Now there's no big manufacturers that really make good Android head units. Uh, previously people were putting iPads in their in their dashes and stuff and you had to make a whole dash kit for it yourself. It's a really big deal. And then uh, I had read some horror stories of those iPad batteries like expanding from the heat because you know your dash gets absolutely blistering hot if you park in the sun. So that's something I didn't even want to mess with. Even though I, I love iPads, they're great. I don't like iPhones, but iPads are great. Um, anyways, I've been looking at these Android systems for the last couple of years. They've had a few of them. They've always been a little bit more than I wanted to spend, you know, three, four hundred bucks. And what you got wasn't something that I wanted, you know, it didn't come with everything. Well, I finally found something that is amazing. And that is this Atoto. See if I can focus a little bit better on it. It's an Atoto Android in-car entertainment head unit. Now, this has customized Android, so you're not going to have a problem trying to install any kind of apps from the Google Play. Everything is going to update properly, and that's what I like the most about it. Uh, basically, you can download any apps that you got on your phone, install and, and keep them updated. Now, a lot of head units don't tell you that. You'll get it, and you'll find out that it's got an older version of Android, and it can't do it, you know. Uh, there's some units out there right now with uh, Android 6 on them. This has Android 4.4, which is a little bit older, but being customized, and this company is a really good company, they've made this Android able to do everything that the new systems can do, and they can keep all the apps updated without a single problem. Uh, you can see it's got car Bluetooth, so you can connect your phone, and you can share it via either USB to share your connection and to uh, put your phone on there, or you can do it by Bluetooth or wireless. So there's three options you have there. You have F, your normal FM AM radio, and then over here you can get a steering wheel control or it'll hook to your current ones if you know how to wire that up. But they've got their own steering wheel control made by a Toto that can go on your dat on your steering wheel and just clip on there, kind of like you if you put a wristwatch on there. Uh, but it's actually made for it, and you can have steering wheel volume controls and that kind of thing. Uh, they've actually got a dash camera that they make for it. Uh, that you could plug into your dash and it'll actually turn this into a DVR because you could hook an external hard drive to the back and sit it in the back of your dash and it'll record your dash cam. Uh, then you've also got your reverse camera which I also plan on hooking up to this because I have a reverse cam on my truck. So I'll have that hooked up. I won't use the dash cam because I've got my own separate dash cam. Alright, so yeah, this is the 32 gig version. I think later on they're going to come out with a 64 gigabyte version, but 32 gigs fine. I don't plan on doing a lot because you can actually, uh, uh, on the front of here, it's actually got, we could put an SD card in it up to 128 gigabyte, and then you can hook a USB drive up that it says it's unlimited, but I plan on hooking a terabyte USB to it with a bunch of music and stuff on it. And then you've still got, uh, I think there's two or three USB ports, but one of them will be for just the dash cam, one of them will be for a hard drive, and one's for your phone or your USB music. Um, so anyway, some features about it here. It's got, uh, let me focus just a bit more there. It's got a two second boot time. Once you've booted it up the first time, it'll turn on in two seconds. That means it'll probably turn on before you even start the car, get the key turned all the way to start your car. So that's, that's pretty cool. Um, they do continuous firmware updates. And if you look there, it says, uh, cost worthy. This unit was $186. Now my last unit that doesn't do a third of what this unit does was I think it was two hundred or three hundred dollars because it's a it's a touch screen and everything, but it's not Android or anything like that. So and, and if this you look here, professional service. They do twenty four hour help with anything, installs, whatever you got, they will help you through it. Uh, so it's it's really cool. I mean this is this is something I've been looking at for a long time. Uh, so now 
I'm going to go ahead and get the camera set up a little bit closer and I'll show you what the unit comes with in the box and then what I bought extra for the unit. All right, so I've moved a little bit closer. I know the system here is out of focus, but I'll put that in focus in a minute. I'm going to go through a couple of the things that it comes with. Uh, so it comes with two USB plugs here, and these are their own special type. That See, this is what plugs in the white part, plugs into the back of the unit, and then this is your plug there. So it comes with actually two of these. One of them will be marked USB 1, and one will be marked USB 2, and they'll tell you where to plug those in. Uh, next, you've got your standard plug for the back of the unit and what's nice is all on every one of these is labeled to tell you what it is and what it goes to so that's pretty cool um, and you've got your GPS antenna here now I've had one of these with my dash cam that was just exactly like this but it wasn't magnetic this one's actually magnetic so if you wanted to stick this up above your headliner and magnet it to the top of the roof underneath everything and be out of out of where it isn't seen. I guess you could do that. I don't know if that would block the signal very much. Normally I mounted mine to the top of the windshield uh, behind the uh, rear view mirror. So this actually comes with uh, a sticky pad for that. So if you just want to stick it to your glass, you still got that option. So there you go, GPS antenna. Uh, then it comes with your mounting brackets and all the screws necessary. And what something else they've in, they actually just started including was the microphone. Uh, there's actually a microphone on the front of the unit over on this upper left corner. But some people were complaining that it wasn't picking them up properly. And I kind of looked at it and I could see why. Because the hole in the front is probably a few centimeters or uh, probably, probably a quarter of an inch or whatever uh, out, out from the mic that's actually on the control board in there. So I could see why that was a problem. So they actually threw in a mic now for no extra cost and they didn't even up up the price of the unit. Uh, I've already got a microphone on my current head unit to talk on the phone and stuff while you're driving. So it's really nice to have these. These are like some of the coolest things that I've that I have to get on a head unit, you know, to be able to talk while you're driving. Uh, then of course you've got your manual and uh, it's it's a pretty decent manual. I, it doesn't go super in the depth with a lot of it, but it does uh, have quite a few pages with pictures, and uh, then there's some of the accessories there. So there's the dash cam I was telling you about that you can get in the upper left corner there, and here's the rear view camera that they've got that you can plug in, or you can plug in your own. Um, here's their OBD2 reader that you can get to read the uh, metrics off of your car because they've actually got an app on there. It works with torque and whatever else you want. And they've got a, a total DVD ROM box, and uh, you can throw in a bunch of DVDs in there. And it's like a, I guess it's like a, uh, you know, from the older days, if you had car stereos, you had a, uh, a switcher in there that moved probably ten or so CDs around, and you could flip through them. You know, I forget what they call them now. I used to have a CD player that had that took three CDs and. Uh, you could, uh, you know, spin between three CDs. And there's the uh, steering wheel control there that you could get, and that just goes right onto your, your steering wheel. My stupid watch is ringing. All right, I declined that call in the wash. Okay, anyway, so here's a couple things that I got for it extra. So this isn't made by a Toto, but this is a separate uh, OBD2 adapter. Uh, this is made by VP. I think it was six, no, maybe it was $10. Uh, so this is just a Bluetooth OBD2 reader that I got that will connect to that. So uh, one of the things with these Atotos is with the Bluetooth, you have to connect this first to that. And then you connect your phone and everything else after that. But you got to make sure you connect this uh, this first for some unknown reason. But uh, yeah, that's something that I had to have. I mean, I don't know how well it's going to work, but I wanted to be able to try it. And then I picked this up. It's not actually in here, but this is the uh, Atoto... Uh, power cable this lets you plug it into the back you, you know plug it into a normal wall socket and then plug it into the back and then it's got two speakers you can hook up if you want uh, to connect the speakers but it lets you power up the unit in your house then you can update everything everything yourself you know and get it all ready because right now it's like we've had 90 to 100 degree days outside and I do not want to sit in the car and uh, update the Android on this all day you know so I'd rather get everything updated in here Go out, sit in the heat, do the install, and be done, you know, and uh, cool off. So basically that's what I've done here. I've got it hooked up here, and I'm, I've been updating some stuff. So now that I've got some stuff going, I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer to the screen, and I will show you what I've got going on.
All right, so I've moved us just a little bit closer here. Um, some things that I forgot to mention about this, the unit is about six inches deep, so you're gonna need about six inches of clearance in your dash if you wanna install this unit. And it does have a seven inch touchscreen, uh, you know, diagonally. So anyway, the unit is really responsive, I found, and I've, I really like it so far. So on the side, these are all touch buttons here. You got a power button, a back button, a volume button up and down, a little bitty reset pinhole here, and then you've got your SD memory card here. Now on the back, it's pretty basic. You've got uh, your subwoofer inputs to hook up your amp and everything like that. You've got the two plugs for the USBs that are included, and uh, there's a fuse on the back. And it's pretty basic, you know, it's got the dash cam inputs and outputs in your reverse camera. So nothing nothing too ex extravagant there. It's basically a head unit. Um, so you can see here we are running Android, and you can do everything that you can do normally. You can It's even got a speed up button because it does have the two second boot time. Um, it, doesn't, uh, it, it doesn't actually shut off. So you know if you have an Android phone or something like that or a tablet, you do have to turn them on and off, you know, every few weeks or months or whatever because they will get kind of jammed up. But it does have a speed up button handy there. You've got your settings, your Wi-Fi. I mean, it, it's basically a normal tablet. It's even got a restart button there to, to make it easy to restart. And then you've got your normal stuff here. You can uh, swipe everything out of the way, you know, from your updates and that kind of thing. Um, I think this is the clear all button. Let me click that. Okay. I think it already cleared them. Okay, so that's it's got a clear all button. Just you know, just like your normal, your normal tablet. You've got uh, your time down here. Uh, you've got your volume indicator here to tell you what volume you're at. It's got a little indication there to tell me what equalizer I've chosen. It's actually set stock to flat. Um, then down here you've got your Android buttons. You probably can't see them quite well, but you've got the one that brings up to show all your apps that are open. You've got the home button and then the back button. Uh, basically right here, this is a widget here, so you can hold this and move it around and do what you want with it. That's your radio scanner. Um, then you can also open FM here if you want to look at radio that way, and you can buzz through your stations and your, your equalizer settings and that kind of thing. If you want to change it to AM, you just click that there. If you want AM radio, I don't know anyone that listens to AM radio, or hardly FM these days for that matter. So you've got your favorites. It's I believe it's unlimited favorites. Uh, you know, on my normal head unit now, I think you can only choose like 10 favorites or something. Not that I even have more than 10 stations around here that I listen to. So we'll go back out here. Uh, down here, it's got your phone button. I don't have my phone connected up right now because I need to wait to get this installed to connect uh, the OBD2 reader to Bluetooth first before I can connect my phone. So I'll have all that coming up later to show you how that works. Uh, you've got your music button here. This just basically opens up your stored music that would be on your, your thumb drive and, or your hard drive, wherever you want to look at it. Uh, and we'll go back out here. And then over here, this is your navigation. Um, I believe you can install whatever navigation apps you want. It comes stock with uh, Google here. Um, the screen doesn't look as crisp on camera or in person as it will be because it's actually still got the film on here like a protective film and it kind of makes it a bit uh, uh, weird looking but I don't want to take that off until I get it installed in the truck because I will be you know pushing it in and out to do different things to, for fitment and that kind of thing so at the end of this video I'll show you uh, if I can get a better shot of what the screen looks like uh, so anyway, there's your navigation, and you can uh, move it all around or type up here and, and search for what you want, you know. So it's pretty responsive. Um, it does only have a gigabyte of RAM, but from what I found, it's optimized really well for that gigabyte of RAM. Um, I've, I've installed some apps here already. I've got Pandora. I've got YouTube, so we can open this and uh, see my YouTube channel here. It will pop up, well, if I click this over here. You can see it's it's really responsive. It's it's great. So you can see a lot of uh, my videos here and that kind of thing. All right, we'll go back home. And I've got the weather channel. I've got Bluetooth music. Here's the OBD Torque app. Uh, I don't have that even. I haven't even opened it yet. I don't have it connected. So you can actually customize a lot of this stuff, I believe. I've never even used the Torque app, but from what I've read, 
you can customize a lot of these gauges to show what you want you know your air fuel mixture or something you know it shows all kinds of metrics about your truck so that's going to be pretty cool to mess with i've got my mlb app so i can actually listen to baseball games and stuff uh over here it's got another app for music kind of like the the music app here and then over here that's your voice controls because it will uh use google voice and that kind of thing to open apps and that you know that kind of stuff so you've got your normal play store just like your android phone or your tablet here uh, you can go through and search for whatever you want and play games if you want so that's pretty cool it's, i don't know if it's multi-touch i don't think so let's see if it'll okay i don't think it's multi-touch so it's not the uh uh, the good multi-touch, you know, like an actual iPad, you know, you can put 10 fingers on there at a time and do multi-touch, but you won't really need to on here. Uh, it's not like you're going to be playing a whole lot of games. Um, then here's your easy connect button here. That comes with it. That's how you connect your phone to it. That way it'll be able to uh, automatically connect your phone whenever you turn it on. This is the S DVD player. That's what connects to the uh, DVD uh, switcher. When if you, if you chose to to buy that add-on for this, it comes with a file manager installed. Uh, we'll open up the settings here. It actually has 5G. I've got it connected to my 5G connection here in the house, so that's pretty cool to have. Uh, you know, not just basic Wi-Fi. It's actually got uh, 5 gigahertz connection there, and uh, you've got your network, your device at the top. Um, you can go through and do it just like an iPad or a, not an iPad, an Android tablet and everything or your phone. And go through and look through your account information for uh, Google. You can go through, do your system update and check your Android. So this, you can, like I told you, this has Android 4.4.2. Um, tell you the Bluetooth version. You can factory reset it. Uh, switch up the date and time. It's all automatic right now, so I don't have to worry about that or a system update. I don't know how the system update works, but it looks like um, you can update a Toto right here on your Wi-Fi, so that's pretty cool. So I don't know if there's an update. It looks like there is a new update. I'm not going to click it yet because we're still kind of looking through it. But uh, it's you can do uh, live wallpapers. We'll open up the settings here and uh, I'll show you the wallpapers. Go to display, wallpaper. So it's got a bunch of wallpapers already installed, and uh, they're not they're not too bad. And it's really crisp, even with this uh, silly screen protector that's on here right now. They're they're really crisp. They look really good. And we'll open up a live wallpaper here. Looks like at bat is at a wallpaper for some reason. That's kind of weird. Uh, I don't know if they've got a wallpaper that. They've got, we'll turn this live one on and you can see what it does. So that's pretty cool. Go back here. But yeah, it's got all kinds of uh, wallpapers installed. And then, of course, you can download your own or whatever you want. Uh, so basically, um, I'm going to get this installed today and see if I can get, my, get the OBD2 reader connected, get my phone connected, and all that fun stuff. So hopefully you guys stay tuned for that. All right, guys, so it's later on in the day. I've already uh, installed this and gave it a good test. I wasn't going to film the install because it's it's just a basic head unit install, you know. Um, if you've ever done one, you can do them all, so there's no big deal. Uh, the only difference with this is you plugged in a GPS antenna, which just screws in one spot, and you plug in a microphone and a USB, which is all just basic stuff. So I've got it off now, and I wanted to... Uh, show you how quick it boots up now your first boot will take uh, you know a couple of minutes and then anytime you actually power down the unit to refresh it you know because like i said every three months or so you might want it to uh refresh it just like any phone you know, like if you've got a cell phone you know you usually want to power it off once in a while just to you know help speed it up a little bit but anyway once you've got it installed and you're through the initial boot it's only two second boot time so i'm going to show you here just click the key on let me turn my air conditioner down because I was sitting here with the AC on, configuring a little bit of stuff. All right, so here's uh, turning the key on. And before I go any farther, you can see I use my old um, thing in here because I did have a big touchscreen display in here already. It just wasn't the Android style, but I used my old uh, install kit and everything just <laughs> fit perfect. And it absolutely looks like a factory install just like the other one did. So anyway, I'm going to turn the key on now. 
And there you go. It's already booted up. And there's the music on. Well, the radio. So anyway, I'm going to zoom in here and kind of show you a couple things. I'll try to uh, focus it just a bit here. Okay, so now you can see uh, a little bit of what's going on. I'm going to go ahead and turn the radio down. So you can see you've got buttons on the side, or once this is popped, you can uh, do what you want there and and uh, change it with your finger. But it's it's super responsive. Uh, basically, I've got my thumb, just my thumb drive hooked up now. But like I said, you can hook up a uh, um, a big uh, USB hard drive or whatever. So right now it's just updating my songs because I've put a bunch of extra songs on here. It's kind of searching my thumb drive and everything and looking for everything so now we can see it's pulled up the music and everything and then you can go through you know th just like an android tablet guys so if you've got an android phone or a tablet or anything like that it's just like that so you can search by album folder and then even go down here and click the search button and then once something's playing uh whoops i clicked out of it once something's playing you can click this and if you've got the album art which a lot of this i don't have album art for art for you can uh, go through here and uh, see the album art. Right now it's kind of building a playlist, but I'll uh, back out of this and we'll go back home. So that's your basic music app, or you could use this other one. I haven't even opened this yet. Uh, so I, oh, actually this is the video player, sorry. So that's to play your, your video files, and I don't have any video files on there now. Um, I already showed you the navigation, but basically you pop it open and, uh, you know, it'll... Uh, show you right where you're at and you can click up there to uh, go anywhere you want so hopefully it's pretty well focused um, back out of here now this is the other thing here that uh, I just installed I hadn't got to show you yet this is the OBD torque this is one of the main reasons I installed this uh, so the truck will probably have to be on here because it's actually not getting any data until I start this so I'm going to go ahead and start the truck. It's going to be a little bit loud, guys, because my exhaust is loud and I've got the doors open because it's like 95 degrees out today. So bear with me here. It'll be loud for a minute, but you'll get to see the the data as it as it comes connects to the uh, connects to the OBD2 reader. I'll just give it a minute here. Usually it takes a minute to connect uh, when it first opens up. I've got it set. To where it should open in the background and stay running but uh, I haven't seemed to get it to work like that yet so this this apps pretty new to me I don't know a lot about it but up here in the corner I can see that it has found the OBD2 reader it is connecting connected and it's with that little light flashing up here behind my finger it's uh, waiting for information from the truck so I don't know if that's like a lag between the OBD2 reader and my truck because you know my trucks an 04 Silverado uh, so I don't know how, what kind of time it takes to get that data, but once it's connected it, it works perfect It doesn't have all the sensors like some of the new vehicles um, But it does do quite a few of the sensors So once it connects here, uh, we're gonna have some information. It may take a second I'll go ahead and click off the video and uh, bring it back once it connects all right, guys, just a few minutes later, I actually went ahead and just rebooted the Android system, uh, the head unit here. I think it was having a problem because I actually updated the app. I bought Torque Pro just after I did it and had it all set up. Uh, so anyway, this is what it boots into on, on Torque. Uh, the only difference between Torque Lite and Torque Pro is you can get a bunch of different uh, uh, gauges and stuff here. So here's my real-time stuff that I have set up, and all this stuff is changeable, the sizes, the type of gauge, and what it looks like. So up here I've got coolant running to show the temperature. Uh, that's speed. This is revs. It's not getting any data right now. It usually does. I'm not sure why. And like I said, that, that could be a problem with either my truck because it's an 04 and it doesn't uh, send the information like it should or it's the cheap adapter I bought because I only bought the $10 adapter and they actually had a $40 adapter as well. But uh, uh, it normally works. Like That's the first time I've actually seen it not working. But then you've got your throttle percent, like how much the throttle's pressed in right now. Um, that wasn't a boost gauge. I guess it changed to a boost gauge or something. I didn't have it set at, at that. Um, then you've got different stuff, like if you're a drag car, you can do that kind of stuff. You've got a pitch and roll meter. This is your emissions readiness. Like it'll, 
like when the truck boots up or starts up it checks for misfires checks the fuel system checks your components and checks your o2 sensors um, everything's complete with green that does that it does check for the other stuff it doesn't check for, for or it's incomplete which means it just do, it doesn't do the check I guess uh, then you've like I said pitch and roll that button there will actually clear any trouble gauges if you've got any I've owned this truck for uh, man since 2012 and it's 2017 now and I've never had a, a, a engine check a check engine light or anything on this truck it's been a great truck um, up here I've got a couple different things also I've got GPS and and, and the uh, compass and then I've got a little map there and all this stuff is changeable but basically that's the torque app and uh, you know you can change a lot of this, this stuff it's really neat to have this information going down the road it actually you can I have, I've just got into it guys but it'll actually set it up as where you can see your miles per gallon for fuel economy if you don't have that on your current vehicle so anyways that's the torque app um, it is pretty neat um, then you can go into your other apps like I I watch baseball you know I my favorite teams the Cardinals I got a, I know most people are Cubs fans now I don't know if everybody switched over or what they've left their team and jumped on the Cubs team so um, this is one of the reasons I got it too so I can see this stuff on the fly um, so you can see the game just started I'm about to head in and watch it but you can check stats on here or whatever you want or even uh, click the headphones oh, not that one click the headphones here and uh, listen to the game so click Cardinals Cardinals at Mets STL and then we'll turn the volume up here That's the arm of Dexter Fowler. there we can hear the ball game the we're going down the road and I could do that before but I had to have my phone connected and all kinds of other stuff so and you can see everything still plays in the background. Um, if you don't want it to, all you have to do is go in here just like anything else and close it. Um, it's it's pretty basic, guys. So if you've owned a tablet, you can do all this with the tablet and everything like that. I'm actually going to be setting up Fox Sports Go here, that app there, because you can actually watch the baseball games live on here if you've got it through your cable company. Um, it's got a file manager and everything, but yeah, guys, I'm loving it. It's pretty cool. I haven't got it all set up, but so far, so good. It, it's really, it works really well. And it, um, the main thing about these, like I said, is they've got their own customized Android. So if you go into the settings on here, if I can keep the camera on here for you guys, uh, a lot of the settings are customized. So when you go into, um, let's see, device and sound, it actually has sound stuff for a head unit, like loudness. Uh, your presets, your equalizer adjusting, your subwoofer settings. Um, you know, it's pretty neat. And your auto brightness, like I hooked up the the uh, illumination wire when I did this. And you can actually change it to change with your headlight to dim it or not. You know, brighten it, whether it's your headlights are on or not or with the time and everything. Um, you can do your panel LED display. See these little LEDs on the side over here? You can actually change them between the colors or white or black if I guess you just want them off or green or blue uh, I thought the red looked pretty cool so I put it as red there's your wallpaper uh, it, that's pretty easy too like I just went opened up Google Chrome on here downloaded this wallpaper and it automatically found it and brought it in here and then I can uh, adjust the size well if I actually click it here that I want to change it because uh, actually I think this is you know let me let me see here. Uh, this is actually I was saying earlier that it wasn't a multi-touch, but it actually is because when I went in here and I clicked this image, I could actually use my fingers here and adjust it. See on a on a non-multi-touch screen, you can't do that. You can't uh, adjust it for image size. So I I did that with both of my fingers and didn't even realize it till I just turned the video back on for you guys. Um, so yeah, I mean it's it's pretty high tech guys, and I'm a I'm a pretty high tech person, you know. As you can see, well, you can't really see if, until I look up here, but I've got my a GPS mount there. I've got always had a dash cam. I've had a dash cam since before most people had a dash cam in their car, you know. Uh, I like that high tech stuff. It's it's pretty cool. 
Uh, but anyway, that's it. That's pretty well it, guys. It works amazing. For $186, you cannot beat it. And you can keep adding pages on here just like a tablet. You can put more pages and put all your apps you want on here. And it's it's the 32 gig model, so it has plenty of space. And then you can uh, you can load all your your stuff onto a thumb drive or a uh, SD card or uh, you know anything you want. The the hard drive. Um, and then, like I said, you can get the dash cam and turn the sucker into a DVR. And then when you open up, I can show you the app, even though I don't have anything connected. Here's the DVR app. So your camera would be there, and it would show a display. You can use it to take a picture, which would be up on your dash. You can take a picture, record stuff, delete stuff, play the footage right here. So if you got in a wreck or seen something, you could show a cop or an officer right here really quick what happened instead of having to take the SD card out of your normal setup and then taking it home, getting the footage off for the officer and trying to prove your case, you could show him right there on the side of the road that it wasn't your fault before he wrote you the ticket. You know, that would be amazing. I've been in a situation like that where the cop just don't believe you till he gets the footage, you know. Um, but yeah, it's pretty cool. And then, like I said, you can uh, drop down this thing and, and clear all your apps out that you're not, you know, using and change your Wi-Fi, uh, click the speed up button to speed everything up but it's a it's a pretty nifty unit guys I am highly impressed with these and like I said I looked and looked and looked and looked for an Android system for the vehicle and none of them were up to par and they were too expensive for the for the little bit of stuff that they did and this thing does everything and more that I wanted plus it does it well and the screen looks absolutely beautiful let me see if I can zoom in really far on that screen and uh, let you guys well I'm already zoomed in all the way because I got a wide-angle lens let me see if I can show how good the quality is of it. Let me get really close to these pixels here. There you go. I am super close to that. And it's just super good quality. So yeah, it's a super good screen, guys. It's pretty amazing. So pick yourself up one. And then, like I said, down here, you can see that flashing green light there. That's my OBD2 sensor that's just plugged in and automatically comes on. You don't even have to do anything. Your, your head unit will automatically connect to it up here and it works perfect so anyway guys thank you for watching I appreciate it um, I'm going to try to get my phone working with it next because you have to uh, either connect it with Bluetooth Wi-Fi or plug it in with USB and I haven't messed with it yet so that's coming up next and I'll get that going but I ain't gonna make a video on it because it's nothing too intense it's really basic stuff so thanks for watching guys I really appreciate it have a good one